Hello everyone, this is Gaurav from Automation Hacks and welcome to a new video series on test observability. Uh, in this series, we are going to primarily talk about Report Portal, which is a very popular open source platform for collecting your test results and then visualizing them in a nice UI as well as a bunch of additional features. I've been using this in past couple of companies and it's giving me a pretty good uh, platform in order to leverage and then visualize what my different tests are doing, visualize their health in terms of flakiness, broken test, or in general derive some higher level metrics. So let's get started. Um, if you search for report portal, yes, you can see that it has documentation on their site and um, they have a pretty good uh, documentation to look at. Um, it provides like bunch of features and we are going to talk about it in this um, series. But say you want to access the documentation, you can just go to learn, go to documentation and you have bunch of, uh, you know, readily available documentation that you can, you can use. What is Report Portal? Um, Report Portal is a platform. In a nutshell, you can think of it as a complete solution that integrates with the test runner of your choice. So be it JUnit, TestNG, Cucumber, PyTest, whatever be a different language, there is an integration for it present. And you have a capability of also creating your own uh, integrations. And once you have these test results, uh, you know, uh, coming in, you're running your test suits, uh, your test results are uh, pushed to report portal, which is a platform that has, uh, you know, stores all these results. Basically, it will take your JUnit XML output, parse that output, convert it into some uh, data model that it will maintain in a Postgres database. Uh, it has a search layer in terms of open search on top of it. So, so it supports multiple sort of search use cases as well and then uh, exposes also a nice API layer. So we can get into it in further videos in this series. Uh, lots to talk about. But let's talk about the basics, like how do you install Report Portal? How do you set it up? So we are primarily going to use uh, the Docker installation since it is the most simplest to get started with. Report Portal does support installation on Kubernetes, a um, bunch of other uh, sort of OS in case you want to deploy it on say GCP um, or on like a plain uh, Linux VM. So there are instructions for all of them. Uh, the easiest way to get started with Docker if you don't have it is go to Docker desktop for your platform. So I'm using a MacBook, so I'll search for that. Go to Docker desktop, um, go to download, then choose the platform that you are on, either Mac, uh, Windows or Linux. So um, I downloaded this Apple Silicon uh, version and then I just installed it. After installing, uh, you will get a sort of UI like this. Um, and you can see that there are already bunch of containers running from Report Portal uh, in my particular case, but let's go over the instructions. Um, just to understand so this is like a nice UI for you to visualize. Okay. What are the different containers I have running on this particular machine? Um, so coming back here, once you have a uh, Docker desktop installed, it's also going to install Docker compose, which is what we are going to use to, uh, set up these containers. So before I go there, let me just talk about the example project that we'll be using uh, throughout this video series just to understand, um, you know, how do you integrate a report portal with an existing framework? So I have an example of that already. So you can come to automation hacks, uh, which is my GitHub and come to this test infra repo. It's primarily a Java test ng sort of project where I have a test suit that I use to push certain results into report portal and also I'm using it to build some additional sort of test infra and tools. So keep watching this repo for further enhancements in the future. Um, so you can uh, just clone this repo using HTTPS, SSH or GitHub CLI, whatever you prefer. Uh, and uh, I have it cloned already in my machine. So let's uh, come to this repo and I'll give you a brief sense of uh, the report portal related aspects. 
So if you see this project, you'll see a docker compose.yaml file uh, in the root directory. And this is what uh, we are going to primarily use to set up um, our environment. If you can see that uh, there are a bunch of things that, uh, that are already set up as part of an installation. So as an example, you can see it uses, um, you know, a sort of Postgres database. It uses RabbitMQ as a queue uh, sort of uh, layer in order to support asynchronous communications and whatnot. Um, then it uses an API gateway called as traffic. Um, here, what you'll notice is I have intentionally exposed these ports. Uh, so you can see this section. Um, when you download the default docker.compose, it will actually have this commented. Um, so I wanted to play around and understand the platform a bit more deeply. So I have it, but it's not necessary if you are just getting started. Um, you can see that there is open search. Um, I also added this open search dashboard section because I wanted to evaluate that later on. Um, there is Postgres, uh, RabbitMQ, as I already talked about and then bunch of uh, internal services, right? So say uh, if you are going with a vanilla kind of uh, setup, then how would you install uh, the docker.compose? You can actually just come to report portal docs, go to deploy with docker, and you can see that they give you a curl command. So if you run this curl command, you will get the latest docker uh, compose yaml file which will have the latest version of report portal so it's a good way in case you want to say upgrade to uh, a further version later on you can use it and uh, the key thing in terms of like uh, you know bringing up your docker instance is this command so you use docker compose uh, p to give a prefix to all the containers um, use hyphen D to start in daemon mode and then hyphen force recreate in order to spin up the containers. So you can go ahead and run this command and it would just make sure that all the containers are running. Um, in my case, I already have it running. So if I say just do docker ps hyphen a, you can see that uh, there are there are like, uh, you know, bunch of containers already running um, and they are all in healthy state. So this is one good validation to check before, uh, you know, you proceed further that all your containers are healthy. Uh, in the beginning, you will see there are some containers that will take a bit of time, such as migrations uh, and uh, RabbitMQ, but give it uh, maybe like five minutes and it will get installed. So if you have report portal already installed, then how do you, uh, you know, work with it? So let me just uh, come here and log out. So you can go to localhost 8080 UI login and you'll come to this screen. And uh, when you install report portal freshly, you have certain default credentials that you can use. So you can also find that those credentials are mentioned in this talk. So you can use uh, either a default user, which is not having admin privileges, or you can use this user, which is having admin privileges, right? So I'm just going to use the admin user so that I can show you uh, what all options are available. And um, yeah, so once you start, you can see that, okay, it already uh, starts with say this launches screen where I already have some tests running and I'll show you uh, by running as well uh, in a moment. Um, but say you have a fresh installation, what you will typically see is uh, you won't have any project apart from you'll just have this super admin sort of, uh, you know, default project created with no launches or whatever. So how do you create a project, right? How do you get started? So you can come to this bottom left section, uh, go to administrate, and then you'll see you have an option to add a new project. You can give any project name here. Uh, in my case, I've already given it test infra as a project name, which you can see here. Um, and so that is there. After you create the project, how do you push results, right? That is the most important part. So you can, uh, to set that up, you need a couple of things. One is you can go to this profile section, go to API keys, and then generate a new key. You can give it any unique string. It's going to give you uh, API key, uh, make note of that API key uh, so that you can use it later on and then uh, come back to this project. 
search for reportportal.properties and you can see that there is this key, right? API rp.api.key. So just paste the key that you get from your local installation here. And uh, that's pretty much it. There is just one additional thing that we need uh, in order to configure the logging integration. So let me just show that uh, quickly. So you have a good idea about it. So if you come to this project, you'll see that uh, I already have added certain dependencies, right? I'm using report portal agent java test ng um, using 5.4.2 version and i'm also using logger java logback 5.2.2 version right so these dependencies are required in order to push the result into report portal and you can go to um, also like add a logback.xml in the test resources folder so this uh, logback.xml is just configuring uh, an appender right which is just to say that, okay, if I log any sort of logs using, say, logback as a framework, then send those results in. And the last bit of thing uh, that we need to make sure that it's connected is um, within your test task in Gradle, you need to attach uh, the listener, right? So in this case, this particular listener, com, epam, report portal test ng, report portal test ng listener, this needs to be attached to your uh, test task so that um, the listener is attached whenever your test suit runs and then it can push the results uh, into report portal. So now uh, say I want to like run some tests and see how it behaves, right? I've already configured the API key. I have the dependencies. Of course, if you clone the project, you get all of this out of the box and I have the logback.xml configured. So now, uh, how do I say push the results? So let me just uh, run some tests. So uh, before that, I'll just show you like what tests we have here. So I have like a um, Recris site, which uh, it's a very popular sort of site, which has a bunch of REST APIs that you can use, basically fake data for you to practice on and do whatever. So I've taken this API, uh, which is like a bunch of these different API operations to list a user, create, update, delete a user, register, login, etc. And I've created a certain rest assured tests on it. So if you come and see these files, you can see that, okay, I have uh, certain tests already written, which is just using like rest assured DSL in order to uh, make an API request and then verify the status code. Uh, pretty uh, standard stuff. Uh, I've also intentionally caused a couple of cases to fail uh, in order to see how the failure scenario looks like in report portal. So you can see that here, uh, the test actually should be 1201, but I've changed it to 200. And um, I've also given an example of like flaky test by just randomizing the, you know, uh, sort of status code that this particular test will throw. So um, these are like categorized into these uh, packages like users, registration, login, delayed, re uh, delayed response and things like that. So how do I like run the test? Uh, let me just use this command. Um, so you can see like I'm using Gradle wrapper test. I'm using included groups to specify a test ng tag. So if you come to say like, um, let's come to say as an example, like any of the user cases, you can see that I've already added the test ng group as identity. Uh, this is just specified in one of the constants file. So I'm making sure that I can pull the tests basis that, and this is supported by um, the test task where I've added this included group section. So basically like if I provide a test ng group, it will make sure it only picks those tests. Uh, and this is using the standard sort of Gradle plugin, right? So let me just run one test just to make it more concrete. So I'm using, I'm running identity tests and I'm also giving rp.launch as identity tests. This is an important parameter to understand because what it means is uh, when the results are pushed into report portal, they will basically have that given name, right? Um, yeah, so it is running, okay. And now let's come to report portal, come to test infra project launches, and you can see
identity okay identity test ran just now seven seconds ago uh, total 14 tests ran eight of them passed and six failed so if i come to the failed test you can see uh, there is one create and then there is there is five delete this is intentional because i have actually made this test run multiple times just to see like how um, you know like a given test looks like so i've used this invocation count as five um, just as an example to simulate different types of uh, flaky scenarios basically so you can take any of these failed cases and actually just come to like the stack trace and you can see that oh okay you can figure out like what was the exception and you get like um, idea on like how or where that was also called right so pretty neat um, you can see that okay this test was earlier passing and now started to fail when i introduced uh, that sort of artificial failed behavior so um like in in nutshell i think uh, you now understand how to set up report portal on a local docker instance how do you create a project how do you create the key uh, plug it into a java test ng framework and how do you push results so that's all for this video in the next video we are going to then deep dive into how dashboards can be created using this data so thank you for watching and if this content is useful to you do give it a like and sub and i'll see you next time